Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to service today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this beautiful day. Um, obviously, I'm not Carl Brandt. Uh, my name is Mike Webb. I'm one of the lay speakers in the district, and it's good to be here today. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to welcome everybody who hears it, who's here in person, and also everybody that's watching online. Uh, with, the, with, the co with the COVID pandemic, one of the things that we have is an increase in technology. And so we have to look for the silver lining in things. And uh, so, so welcome to everybody. Um, Pastor Carl asked me to make a few announcements. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And, uh, uh, and then we'll go on with our service. Uh, you know, school's going to be starting soon. And uh, I'm actually a university instructor, so we start our first class tomorrow at the dental school, so pray for them and pray for me. But, um, but you're going to be you're collecting uh, school supplies for Southeast Elementary, and that's ongoing. And uh, so please support this effort either by donating supplies or giving a monetary donation. And Ms. Ann Laws, is she here today? Yay, thank you for, for, for doing that. That's, that's a wonderful ministry. And she's going to be coordinating all that. So I guess if you have any questions, don't ask me. Ask Miss Law. She'll be able to tell you everything you need to know. Uh, if you're planning on taking part on any of, in the uh, Wednesday morning Bible service, uh, please let the church office know by this Wednesday so the books can be ordered. And uh, one of the other things I was asked to, to, to mention was that the grand opening celebration for the Abramson Center uh, that was scheduled for next Sunday is has been postponed until the fall, so it will not be next Sunday. And uh, the new date is going to be out in your emails and church social media sites and those sorts of things. So um, I did get a chance to learn a little bit about this. So um, the, the Abramson Center, and, and uh, you know, I, I can't wait till it opens. I hope to get back down here to see that. I think that's a wonderful thing uh, that, that's going on here. So I now invite you to join me in prayer as we center our, our minds on worship. And, and get our hearts ready to receive the Lord. Pray with me. Father God, as we gather in your house, let us open up ourselves to your presence and have you fill our hearts and minds to your Holy Spirit. Help us put your cares and worries to the world aside so we can be held in your power and glory. Clear the cut clutter that prevents us from really seeing you in all your majesty. Let us feel your love and let all we do here today be in your honor and pleasing in your sight. We pray this through your son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. We unite as your children to say, Amen. Amen.
please rise as you're able for our call to worship. The call to worship today is from the 111th Psalm. Let us give thanks to the Lord with all our hearts. Come, let us worship the Lord, whose faithful love endures your life. of faith. Again, please join me in prayer as we enter a time where we raise up members of the church family and others who are in need of special portion of God's love. Those that are battling physical, mental, or spiritual problems, those who are homebound, or those in long-term care facilities. Members have had their lives affected by the COVID pandemic. We also want to ask for a special hedge of protection for the men and women serving in the military, and also for my brothers and sisters 
for first responders here at home. So please pray with me. Most mighty and merciful God, thank you for letting us gather today to lift up our praises to you. In a world that is filled with war, disease, social and political unrest, we know we can find safe haven in your loving arms. We ask that you give healing and comfort to those members of the church family that are listed in the bulletin and for those that we hold in our hearts. You are the great physician, the one that can heal all, and we ask that you ease the suffering of all that need it. Provide your healing touch to the physical ailments that we see and also to the mental and spiritual sicknesses that may not be apparent to us but are known only to you. As the COVID pandemic continues to ravage the world, God, our scientific and political leaders in pursuit to find a cure for this awful disease and ways to deliver the cure to your people. Lay a special blessing on the students and teachers who are preparing for the new academic year. Bless teachers with the insight and ability to teach their students not only factual information, but also to give us to serve as life skill role models. And bless the students with the thirst for knowledge and the discernment to use that knowledge to do good and to serve you. Bless the men and women of our armed forces who are protecting this country so that we can enjoy the freedom we are of being here today. We especially want to ask for prayers for Edward Prowse IV, who is entering the U.S. Navy. He's the cousin of Stephen Alford. Keep a hedge of protection around them. Keep them safe and bring them back to their families when their time of service is over. Keep my brothers and sisters who are serving as first responders safe as they serve and protect our community. Be with them as they answer the call when a fellow citizen is in need. Father God, guide the leaders in our leaders, guide the leaders in our city, state, country, and all the world. Help them to make decisions that will allow all your children to live in peace with one another. Bless this Abraham Center that's becoming a part of this church. And let it be the mustard seed that grows into a culture of true brotherhood, not only this congregation, but for all people. We ask you also today to be with Pastor Carl. Give him the strength and knowledge and resolve to continue to lead this church in a way that pleases you. And may he be getting you the rest that he needs so that he can go forth and serve you more. Father God, we join our voices in praying the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now have a time of special music to give glory to God.
We've been blessed by God, and we return those blessings through giving God's tithes and our offering. The Bible tells us to be cheerful givers, and there are many ways for us to give. We give of our time, we give of our talents, we give of our resources. There are collection sites at the front of the church, and there are ways to give online, so join me again in prayer. Father God, thank you for all you have given us and all that you have in store for us. Help us remember that all we have comes from you and that the greatest gift you gave us is eternal life. Bless the gifts that we humbly present and multiply them to be used in your greatest glory. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
by singing hymn number 348, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. The lesson for today's message is from the book of John, chapter 6, verse 51 through 58. Now I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is the true food, 
and my blood is the true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live forever because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me again for a moment, please. Father God, thank you for the blessing of being your house and the opportunity to worship you. Let the words I say to thee today be not mine, but guided by you, the Father, and let them be received by all who hear as your teaching. Be with me as I deliver this message, and may all things we do here today and always be pleasing in your sight. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a joy to be here today. As a, as a lay speaker, uh, we've been kind of out of commission for a while, and so being back in, 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 the, in the pulpit and being back in churches and visiting other churches is a real pleasure for me. And uh, it really resonated with this sermon and this, that, I'm, that I was asked to give and, and, and the scripture that I read. Um, uh, you know, we, we, uh, um, uh, we, we fill pulpits around the area. And it, 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 it just it, it gives us the true food. It gives us the, 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 the spiritual food that we need in order to, to be Christians. So it may sound a little odd, but as I was going through this, and, and uh, as, as I said, I teach at the dental school, so I've got a couple things to do during the week. But, um, you know, so, but preparing for this, even though it's, it, it takes up some time, it really, it really rejuvenated me. It really gave me the food that I needed. So, so I thank you for, for letting me be here today. It makes me look deeper into God's word and, 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 and to reflect on different aspects of the, of, of the scripture. And, um, you know, sometimes it actually takes me down a rabbit hole. I'll be looking up something online because that's what we do these days. Google's our best friend. And I, I type something in and that leads me to something else and something else. And I haven't gotten a sermon written, but three hours later, I've learned a lot. I've drank a few cups of tea and, you know, it's, it's, it's the middle of the night. maybe. So thank you for letting me be here today and know that I've been fed by being here. So first, let's kind of recap where we are in the Bible um, and, and the context of the scripture that we just read. You know, we can take the Bible out of context a lot of times. So I like to kind of reframe where we are and, 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 and think about what's going on and, and, and why those, those scriptures are important and what's, what sort of preceded them. Now, remember, this is kind of be the Cliff Notes real quick version. Not, we're not going to go deep into the whole chapter, but just, just, to, just to reframe where we're at. Where we're at. So in John 6, it starts with Jesus feeding the 5,000 um, with five loaves and two fish. That's a whole sermon unto itself, right? And, and then Jesus walks on water. Remember that happens. And, and the, as the disciples are taking the, the boat across the lake uh, for Capernaum. Uh, so now it's the next day, and that's where we are now. It's the next day, and these people are, 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 are take a boat over to Capernaum in search of Jesus. And the people are wondering... How Jesus got there, since there was no other boats, and, and, and Jesus wasn't on it. So uh, Jesus tells the people that, that, that they were not looking for him, but uh, because they ate of the loaves, and then they ask, you know, why, uh, what they need to do, and, and what God requires, and, and, and God, Jesus says, you know, they must believe in who was sent, and, and, and so this is kind of where we're at in the story now. And then the people kind of ask him what sign he's going to give. Okay, he just fed people with five loaves or two loaves, and, and he walked on water, but they want more of a sign, I guess, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. And uh, so, so this is when Jesus says that people must eat of the bread given by God from heaven, and that they must eat from the bread of life. And that's where we're at today. And he says that whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life. So, so what, is this, what is this bread we have to eat, and wh where do we get this true food for our souls? And, and what, how are we partaking of this? Um, and that's, that, that's sort of the question I, 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 I want to pose to everybody. Now, we know that, that we take Holy Communion, and that's, 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 you know, we drink of his blood, and we eat of his flesh, and we do that, you know, maybe once a month or special occasions. And, and um, uh, you know, because in John 6 it says, you know, for my flesh is true blood and my blood is true drink. 
And, and so we do this when we take communion. But, but there's more to it than that. We, we, need that. we need a constant feeding. You can't just you know, eat once a month and not, and not do well. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doctor. I know that we're going to drop blood sugar. I know that all that's going to happen. But, but we need to be fed continually. We need to be fed the true food. Okay? We can't live just on a, on a, uh, on a diet of, of Twinkies and 7-Up. And right? we, need, we need the true food. We need that, that food to feed us. And, and so what is that true food and how can we find it? And that's the question I pose today. How do we develop that ongoing personal relationship with Jesus and with God? So we talked a little bit about Holy Communion, and we remember that he gave himself up for us, and that we drink his, his blood and, and eat of his flesh. But that's not the golden ticket into heaven. We have to have that continuous relationship. We have to have that continuous feeding to feed our souls and to take care of ourselves. Just like we need the nourishment that we need every day. You know, sometimes we need reminders that we need to have that nourishment, or that we need to do something. And, and, and I kind of thought of post-it notes, okay? Every, everybody knows what post-it notes are, right? We, those yellow things on our desk, and we put them on our computer monitors, and sometimes I have a whole frame of yellow post-it notes around my computer. And, and we use those as reminders in our lives uh, that we need to do something. So sometimes, and sometimes, you know, uh, you know, we need reminders that are a little more obvious. Uh, during the pandemic, one of the things I was reading that, that gyms were closing, and I let my gym membership lapse, and, and, and I know you all think I'm really fit and, and everything, but, but you know, I had to, I had to, you know, I had to get back into exercise, so I bought an exercise bowl, and it got delivered, and my first day's exercise was just putting it together, and now it's sitting in my living room, so I can't watch TV without seeing the exercise bowl. So that's my reminder to, to, to work out every day. And yes, I did write 30 minutes this morning already, so I'm, I'm done for the day. But, but you know, how can, how can we have that reminder for us? And, and how, can we, how, can we, how can we have that, that in our lives so that we have Jesus in our lives every day? And, 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 and I know there's some, uh, uh, some, some other things. And, 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 you know, how do we partake of that true food? One of the things you might have seen, and it came out in the uh, late 90s was the WWJD. Remember that? What would Jesus do, right? And, and we all saw them on bracelets, and we saw them on t-shirts, and we saw them on, you know, stickers, and, you know, who knows what else you put WWJD on, right? And, 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 and what a lot of people don't realize is and, and that this was, and this is what other rabbit hole I went down when I, was, when I was preparing this sermon, but this was actually started in 1989 by a youth pastor in Michigan. And she had read a book that was written in 1890, I believe. And it was a series of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of messages by, by a pastor named Charles Sheldon. And it, they were moral dilemmas. And he always asked at the, end of the, at the end of the sermon, what would Jesus do with this? What would Jesus do? And, and of course, that took on and became a pop culture icon, and it's all over the place. But that's one of the little things. If you've got a WWG, JD thing on your desk, it kind of keeps that reminder in you every day. She took that book and she designed the little, the little bracelet so that she gave to her youth group. And like I said, it became a big pulp, uh, popular icon and, 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 and uh, you can still find it all over the place. And, and uh, you know, it, but it's that little reminder to make you find the true food and make you find the true way. And, and make you think about what would Jesus do every day. And keep that in the forefront. It's so easy to forget when we leave here today. You know, we, we, we have our hour or 45 minutes of, of worship. And then we leave and, and, and it's out of our mind maybe. You know, I, I, keep, a, I keep a little thing on my visor that says don't, don't drive faster than your guardian angel can fly. Because my wife knows I have a lead foot. And so, so you know, we need those little reminders all the time. Like I said, those, those are cute little reminders and cute little things on our desk and around our house or wherever we have our t-shirts or whatever. But it reminds us to open our Bibles and to take of the true food and not just, not just the, 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 the stuff that, that, that's, not, that's not good for us. And as we open that Bible and as we find that true food, it's different for each of us. You know, the, the, the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, was quoted saying, 
Nobody ever outgrows the scripture. The scripture that you read today is going to be the same scripture you read tomorrow. The scripture that you, that you read as a child is not the same scripture that you read. Not the same words, but the meaning to you is different. Okay? And, it, you know, I've also heard that the Bible is the only book that meets us where we're at. Wherever we're at in life, the Bible is going to meet us. It's going to give us, give us, the, uh, give us the, uh, the, the food that we need. You know, I saw this demonstrated actually when I took my preaching class to become a lay speaker. Yes, it may shock you. I actually took a preaching class, and somehow I'm supposed to know how to do this. But we all had the same scripture to use. And there were like 10 of us in this class, and there were 10 different sermons. And it was amazing how different they were, but they were all right, and they were all true, and they were all, all needed, and they were all the true food. As Christians, we're directed to be together to find the true food. We're here today. You know, I'm essentially preaching in the choir, right? We're, we're, we're in community today. We're here together. We're here, we're, here, we're here forming one in Christ. And we're directed to be in fellowship with one another to, to receive that nourishment that we need from each other. You know, too many times we criticize each other, we kind of put each other down, but, but we're directed in Thessalonians you know, encourage one another, build one another up. Hebrews also tells us, consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. <clears throat> you know, being in fellowship with each other needs to include being in fellowship with Christ. 1 John 1, 13 tells us, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. So as we come together, it doesn't have to necessarily be here. It can be out on a boat dock. It can be out on in nature. It can be down the street at a Wood Ducks game. We come together as one and as, as fellowship and in Jesus Christ. In addition to being in fellowship with one another, we also have to have that personal time with God, that personal prayer time. The time when we spend alone. You know, we're told in Thessalonians, you know, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I find this to be a very powerful scripture. That we should be praying all the time. You know, praying is just kind of talking to God. Um, you know, it, 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 we, know, we have corporate prayer here where we, we come together and we talk about you know, we pray for our, 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 our people, and we pray for, for those in need, and we pray, uh, you know, for military and so forth and so on. But, but sometimes you just need to pray to God yourself and have that personal relationship with him and say, I need this. I need this today. I think sometimes we're much more um, able to pray for other people than to pray for ourselves and to take care of ourselves with Jesus and have that personal response with that personal relationship. You know, you can pray when something's going very wrong. That's, you know, that's usually the time people hit their knees, right? When kind of, kind of everything's going wrong, and, uh, you know, this has happened and that's happened. And that, that certainly is a time to pray. But it's also a time to pray when we're rejoicing. You know, we're, we should pray rejoicing that we're here together today, that we're able to be here together today. We've gone through a pandemic. We've gone through social unrest. We've gone through all kinds of things in the past year. To be here together is truly a blessing. So we, one of the ways that we can be fed, which doesn't seem, seem sort of counterintuitive, is by giving or by sharing. Remember that boy that shared his lunch at the beginning of John 6? Just as the boy shared his, his lunch and it fed many, if we share our testimony, if we share ourselves, it'll feed many. We don't even have to really share testimony, you know. There's the old saying, you know, you can tell people about God if you have to use words, you know. You don't, just by, just by doing something for somebody, it can, it, can, it can enlighten them. And if we feed other people, we'll also feed us. As I said today, preparing for this, 
for this message today, it, it fed me. It got me back centered with Christ. It got me back to where I needed to be. Luke 6.38 says, give and it will be given to you. And 2 Corinthians tells us, you'll be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. You know, there are things like going on a mission trip, and I've been on mission trips, and we gave of ourselves, and, 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 and we, if you ever do anything like that, you get back much more than you ever give. It, it is an amazing process. Um, my wife and I have been to Belize many times. Uh, I've, I've worked in the jungle. Uh, you know, sometimes we've had electricity. Sometimes we've had water. Um, don't even, even go into the whole toilet situation. It, 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 but we came back blessed. We came back blessed. You don't necessarily have to do that. You, you just might have to be there with another person. Just, just being there for somebody, and you'll be fed. You know, some of you may be going out to, to lunch after the service, and you know that 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 harried server who is who's trying to trying to juggle twelve tables at once and, and running around. You know, maybe a few kind words. I'm sure a couple bucks wouldn't hurt either, but a few kind words just may make that person's day. We never know what we're going to say or do that's going to help somebody just by giving them a little bit of encouragement, just by giving them a little bit of, of hope. So we have many ways that we can find the true food. Eat from the bread of life and be one with the Father and Son. I've only talked about a few examples, but I'm sure there's many others. We have multiple opportunities in our lives to, to, to share and to eat from the bread of life, to follow Jesus and get closer to God, if we just take the time and opportunity to do so. So as you go out into the world, look for those opportunities. Take the nourishment that your soul needs and get closer to our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join the singing of our final hymn, number 358. <laughs>
from this place, remember to find the food to feed your soul. You may find the true food in solitary meditation with God by being in community with other Christians or by giving to others. So receive this benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.